tired and I didn't have the fucking energy to voice it, you know? But, uh, when I logged on to it, when I went on, when I went on to itch.io afterwards just to check, um, my heart skipped, like, literally just jumped in my chest when I saw that it was like, because I was like, oh my god, it's been more than four months, finally. It hasn't been five months yet, but it's more than four months, because December 6th is the last update, and yeah. It's April, it was April 23rd, so whatever. Anyway, um, this is going to be real. Oh. Oh, that's cool. They have, like, dust blowing around. That's interesting. That's cool. Um, yep, Wednesday. Oh, yeah, December 8th, because uh, I did it two days late. It's 1.37 p.m. right now. Oh. Wait, whoa. Did, did they change the background? I think they did, because I don't remember it being like this. Then again, I, I meant to watch the video last night, but I, my, I went to sleep immediately after, so. That's the thing I do. I rewatch the videos before the one I'm making to get, um, you know, uh, a bit of a memory jogger. Basically, what just happens is that they're in the wood, they're, they're in like the woods near Brian's trailer and Cameron got attacked by whatever the fuck that thing was and then they resuscitated him. But then Brian is standing outside his trailer with a shotgun, as you can see on screen. Um, so yeah, uh, this isn't going to be fun. Well, who knows? I mean... He doesn't really know that. <sighs> mm. That's actually a really good first line. I like that. That's it. Devin stares, feeling himself becoming oddly detached from the situation. Yeah, that's, um, that's dissociation, dude. His mind is still overwhelmed with, with what just happened to Cameron. Yeah, he was attacked by the ghostly thing or whatever that seemed to be feeding him the, like, words from all of Brian's victims. God, that's horrifying. <sighs> that's, what he that's what he wants to focus on, but the shotgun has his tension now, and just for a moment, Devin thinks about just running. If he applies logic to the situation, he assumes the other barrel won't shoot, but something in his eyes, something is off. Yeah, no shit. Actually, that's, that's the thing I was wondering, like, if Brian's been in Echo for this long, you have to wonder how that's affecting him psychologically. Like, is the reason he's a butt fuck insane serial killer because he stayed in Echo this long? Or is that just like because his parents were terrible? <sighs> That's inch. Uh, I don't want to get into that. That's a discussion for a psych major. I'm not that. <laughs> so, Devin says that he will, says what he hopes will make clear to this other bear that they're not a threat. Dude, no. I mean, I know he doesn't know what Brian is what Brian is capable of and what Brian is. But wow, you lit the only other person you've met. The only other person you've met in this town was a fucking insane old weasel who killed your car's engine so you can't escape and uh, I mean what I guess guess I mean yeah I assume the best in everyone unless my gut is telling me otherwise but whatever just <sighs> also the sprite work here you can see like shadows and Lee and like breaks in the that's really cool I love it I, I just love that the quality of polish this game has <sighs> We need help. We're stranded. Our friend is unconscious. The old, old-looking bear focuses on him for several seconds. 
Biffin hears the rustling of dead leaves and foliage next to him as Arturo moves. Suddenly, the bear swings the shotgun around to point to Devin's right. Uh, fuck. Uh, fuck, I need to be silent. Yeah, I need to... Um, I need to describe to you what just happened to me when that line popped up. Like, my heart started going faster, my hands started shaking. <laughs> don't you move, boy. Hey, 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 I'm sorry, I don't suit. Arturo sounds terrified. Oh, that was his voice straight and high-pitched. Old Bear stares at Artie for several seconds before pointing the shotgun down at the ground, but only slightly. Bear gestures at the coyote. Coyote. What the fuck kind of quit? That should be your first sign to get the fuck away from this person. Instead of, how can I help? What's wrong? You doing something. What the fuck? God, I hate rides. I... You're doing something here! Wow, that sucked. Jesus fucking Christ. You're doing something, damn. What? Doing something? No, we're trying to help him. Some attacked him. We need to get him help. Water Bear grimaces. What do you mean, something? Ev hesitates, at least until the gun is shifting his direction. No, wait. I'm not waiting. You show up my problem making all kinds of sounds and you're standing there with a knocked out yo. Hey, we didn't do anything to him. We're trying to help. Bear growls. I don't care if you're trying to help him or trying to fuck him. I want to know the truth, not that something happened. Standoff continued before a few more seconds before Dev jumps in again. It was something dark, like a shadow. Called it something. But I didn't get a chance to see it, but it... Because I didn't get a chance to see it, but it jumped him and disappeared. Then realizes what he's saying as he says it, and he's half expects to be shot for saying something so stupid. I swear to God that's what happened. Water Bear's eyes flicked hardy, and the cat quickly throws his support behind the ridiculous statement. Yeah, it, that is what happened. I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was there. It was dark and had red eyes or some shit. I don't even think we should be out here right now. David once again, once again wants to tell Artie to shut up. But saying more is only going to make this situation worse. But instead of getting angry, he an odd expression comes over the other bear's face. One that Devin can't quite decipher. And he finally speaks, casually bringing the shotgun up to rest over his shoulder. What? Th this isn't brought. And it jumped on him, that yoke there. Yeah. Alrighty, so I'm guessing y'all are on some drugs or some shit. Uh, no. He was out in the heat, ain't ever a good, ain't ever a smart idea. We weren't. Shows up, Rails doesn't matter at, the, at all right now. We need to get him help. He's not waking up. Neil's resting camera on the ground as he have props himself up, needing him to brush his tiring arms. There's a pause in, the, in, the, in this other bear. There's a pause in which this other bear just stares down at them. A pause that's long enough that Dev opens his mouth to speak again. But that's finally when the older bear seems to break out of his trance. Oh, shit. Fuck. There is something about that. Oh my god, that's unsettling. Shit, of course. Sorry about the gun and all, she's that I always get a bunch of coots in my prop every now and then. Then looks up at the suddenly friendly bear. In the back of his mind, he thinks he can almost hear sirens. Very familiar sirens. 
Shit's not even loaded. Yeah, Quincy brings the shotgun forward, pointing it back toward the ground before it seems to break in half as the stock suddenly drops down. Air turns to show them that the barrels are empty. That actually does feel definitely feel a little better, but it, even if the gun had been pointed at them just minutes ago. I'm sorry, but that fucking illus that CG. I feel so uncomfy after seeing that. There's just something in the way that they, that he was drawn. That just no. I told you this art style was going to make the... Actually, I didn't tell you this. I think it was a my Ichio review, but whatever. But the art style was going to make this game so much more scary because it, it's... It's so... It's so dissonant from the horror that it kind of makes it art style even worse. The bear then closes it with a snap. So, I think your best bet is to call the, call the proper authority so they can come get some help here. Do you know how we can do that? There's no service here. Of course there ain't, but service just outside of town to the east. Works whenever I go out there to make a call. Devin's heart leaps in his chest the idea there might actually be a quick way out of this situation. He looks in an eastward direction, ready to set off immediately. Hold on, it's a little ways out there, and it's a pretty specific spot. I can give you a quick ride, no more than five minutes. Old Bear turns away and starts making his way toward the trailer. Don't fucking do it. Don't fucking do this. No. Shit, man. Uh... <sighs> they, this, I mean, I don't know how long this update's going to be, but I'm guessing it's probably going to be the same like as the others. Or is it how? Something I don't know. Artie glances at him, clearly uneasy about all this. Dev is hesitant himself because of course he would be. Anyone would be. But after everything they've been through, Devon looks down at Cameron and the coyote still breathing steadily, now looking almost peaceful. Still, fear grips the bear's chest. The fact that Cameron still isn't waking up is slowly increasing his worry to the point of panic again. So he sets his jaw and follows the old bear. Def expects Artie not to follow, but he does, and the four of them disappear further into the trees. God, this is such a fucking bad idea. Oh, shit. Okay, this is fucking interesting now. Cameron POV when he's basically knocked out. I mean, I'm all for it, but how is this going to play out? Cameron's agony had seemed as it might last forever. The feeling of suffocation going on and on. But after an immeasurable amount of time, the fingers over his mouth and nostrils had dissolved into the blackness. So did the voices, diminished into indistinguishable whispers. Now his breaths come slow and steady, but he has to focus on them, to consciously inhale and exhale so it won't stop. While the experience is terrifying, the laborious nature of it almost ensures that he won't hyperventilate. That's the wrong way to spell insured, but whatever. After a time, uh, terror fades into a dull, hollow desperation, accompanied by spurts of panic each time he remembers he's somewhere he doesn't understand, and that he can't seem to escape it. Then, gradually, even that dissolves, and like a dream within a dream, it fades away. What the fuck? No! No, no, no. No, 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 no. What the fuck? No. I don't want to go through another Brian torture scene. I really don't. God. Damn you, Howley. I mean, not really, but wow. I knew it was coming, but I was holding out hope. But no. Here we are again with Brian on the fucking table staring up at the mirror.
What happened? Where'd Devin, where'd Devin and Artie go? What happened to them? Are they knocked out? Are they dead? But what's happening here? I mean, obviously, it can't. The, the, the person in the intro to this game can't be Cam, Cam because their mom texted them and his mom is dead. So yeah, that 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 kind of dissolves my worry about that there, but still doesn't rule out the possibility that he's going to die in this game, and I don't want that. But whatever. I mean, if it if it suits the story, fine. If it suits where the story is going narratively, I'm fully on board with it. But I'm not going to like it. Cameron's fishy is fish, fishy, really. God. Cameron's vision is blurry at first, and it stays that way as his eyes remain mostly closed and unfocused. Fear hitches in his chest again before he realizes that he'd been breathing normally without the need to focus on it. That's when he notices it, that what he can see is a bit odd. My. This trip has gone to hell so fucking fast. They've been here literally a day and a half. And already this is happening, God. There I go, stalling again. <laughs> it looks kind of like... Way... Like himself. I don't like this. Also, I don't know if I've said this, but this is something I would literally... Uh, God. Cameron stares, still feeling groggy and out of it, trying to make sense of what he's seen. It's him. It's his reflection, but it's hard to understand why that's the case, because it feels like he's lying down. Oh boy, this is going to be so fun, because I, I decided to change this his voice from TJ's to my voice last time, so this is going to be even worse. I mean, not really, but whatever. It, you get the point. At first, the coyote wonders if maybe this is the floor mirror in their bathroom, and that he'd passed out. Still, the angle is wrong, and that just leaves Cameron feeling more confused. The coyote closes his eyes again, trying to remember what happened last. He also begins to wonder why he's lying on something soft instead of the cold tile of the bathroom. Nothing makes sense. So he does the only thing he can think to do at this moment. D Dev? He hears something shift around next to him. Cameron tries to clear his throat, but it's bone dry, so he swallows instead. Dev! Shit! Uh, what? What the fuck is this? This is what? I mean, I know it's Brian's trailer, but excuse? Something is pressed to his lips, and sensing that it's water, Cameron drinks, getting several swallows before it's pulled away. Cameron then looks around, getting a full view of his surroundings. The voice hadn't sounded like Dev's, but... Cameron can't imagine who else it could be, and a large furry brown shape moves into view. Oh my god. Okay, I'm, I'm just confused, because, yes, this is Brian's trailer, but it looks normal. It has a bed. It doesn't have a couch. Where It doesn't have the torture stuff. What is happening? Cameron stares at first wondering what could have possibly happened to Dev, but then he realizes what a stupid thought that is. This is a different bear altogether. He also realizes that something is definitely wrong, that either he's still dreaming or that he's in a situation he can't begin to understand. Lily sits up and the old bear raises a paw. Hey, hey, it's all right, kid. I'm here to help you. The voice is higher pitched than you would have expected from such a large creature, but the coyote feels like he's heard it before, but he can't place it, not right now at least. I'm Brian. What about you? 
Cameron. Cameron responds automatically, even though a smaller voice in the back of his head tells him this isn't right. None of this is right. Well, hi there, Cameron. You probably wonder where the hell you are, huh? While the bear's demeanor is friendly enough, his appearance definitely isn't. Again, Cameron desperately tries to remember exactly what happened last and where exactly he might be. He nods anyway, instinctively trying to keep up the facade that he's okay, that he's fine, and that he doesn't suspect anything's wrong. Oh my god, they actually included the, 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 the act, the right, the right C character in facade. So many writers don't do that with the ends. Well, it's a funny story, but I heard some shouting out outside, and I, when I went out there, I found you and your friends. You were unconscious, of course. Dev? Was he a bear? Cameron looks around, hopefully, as so if Dev might be there with him, with them. It's only then he realizes they're in a trailer, and fragments of what recently, what happened recently, start to come back to him. Leaves him feeling all the more uneasy. Yeah, I bear like myself, and there was a cat, too. Marty. Remembers the past day and a half come back to the coyote slowly, and starts, and with it comes a feeling of anxiety and dread. Either he's in trouble, or he was in trouble, and somehow this bear here is trying to help him. Well, I didn't get his name, he just ran off as I was getting there. Well, where's Dev? The bear, I mean, is he here? Yeah, about that. There shifts around the bed he's sitting on, making the springs squeak. What happened after the cat ran off when you were unconscious, your bear friend Devin, right? He said I'd make a run for the highway to get you help. Cameron stays quiet as he tries to absorb that. The bear's sentence makes sense, technically, but at the same time is confusing. Why would Devin leave him here alone with this bear? Now Cameron remembers that they were on a trip of some kind, a trip to Echo. The voice, the trailer. Cameron starts looking around again and spot a shotgun because now he's starting to realize who this might be. I don't... Comes up short a complete loss. What he wants to say is that he wants to see Dev, but if what the bear said is true, then that won't be possible. D does Devin know I'm here? Of course he does. Seem real worried about you. Say whatever the cat get help, but we're not even sure where he ran off to. Why'd he run? Well, Ryan pauses, seeming to think back, but uh, and also hesitant to say something. Cameron tenses, the feeling of wrongness returning. It's kind of hard to explain, but something spooked him. One well, of the events of the past few days seems to gain momentum, and now he can vaguely remember what happened just before he ended up here. He was standing in the forest, ears down, hearing that awful static. What exactly happened after that is still a bit foggy. What was it? Well, this might sound crazy, and I, but I lived here a good long while, and sometimes there's this thing in the trees that comes after me. Thing? What an odd thing to say. But then he remembers something strange right before he lost consciousness. A dark shadow dropping on top of him before he disappeared into another world, locked in that terrible embrace. A shadow... Although he says it quite soft, the bear clearly hears him. Cameron swallows hard, still feeling like the situation is very off, even when considering the circumstances. Brian smiles in a way that's almost sympathetic. Who is this person? Did it happen to sound like static white noise? Brian looks at the bear carefully before he nods. Yep, I've seen it myself. Some of us can just see things that others can. Cameron swallows loudly. You... You see things too? Yeah, I always could. Don't know why. Through all the confusion and terror, and of all people, this bear seems to understand what Cameron's going through somehow. It creates him a sudden sense of kinship, but... No. Don't. And Cameron remembers his phone, he pulling out and pulling down the power button. Squeak, screen flickers on for just a moment before multiple vertical lines of black appear on the screen, which widens steadily for the entire display goes black. Cameron is confused and remembers the fall and the lake, and he even sees some moisture still under the screen. Shit. 
Ryan grunts. The phone's busted. Shame. No service out here anyway. How long ago did he leave? About two or three hours ago. He's been unconscious that long. Still, the anxiety is telling Cameron to move, to go. I think I should go after him. Thanks for your help, though. Cameron suddenly stands, but a wave of dizziness comes over him. Oh, fuck. He catches himself against the wall, feeling weak and confused. Whoa there, kid. I don't think you're in the best condition to go out there. You might pass out again. That bear seemed real intent in keeping you safe. I don't like that expression. Cameron has to land against the wall, slightly catching his breath. He didn't realize it's still messed up. Wouldn't make sense it's been out for so long. It's just odd. It seems to be getting worse. Whatever that creature did to him, it feels serious. As if reading his thoughts, the bear brings up the entity. Besides, I don't think you should go out there while that shadow creature is still hanging around. Been seen through the window a few times. Don't want to scare you, but I think it wants you. And we glance up at the window nearest to them. Instead of the shadow, we're surprised to see a raincoat monster just beyond the trees, partially hidden in a strange crouching position. Again, like I said in the last video, every time it says, says raincoat monster, I'm like, Stumble! Just like, I'm sorry, it, ugh. Stranger still are the odd, shivering, twitchy motions the creature is making. Though its face is mostly hidden, Cameron can tell he's being looked at. Even after everything he's been through, the Cody finds himself lowering his gaze quickly. Once again, just like when he's eight years old, he's afraid of this hallucination. Or rather, he's afraid of this imitation of the hallucination. Considering it's moving so violently, that's what this is. You say it? Um, no, I, I mean it's something else. Oh, what is it? Sometimes I see other really disturbing stuff in these woods. Well, most places in this town, actually. It's something more personal. Terrence would probably want to stay cautious of this man, but also wanted to confide in him. After the trauma of the past two days, Kimbao was feeling almost abandoned by his boyfriend, that Cody is desperate for some kind of connection. Not with him. No. What kind of things do you see? Brian looks hesitant. I don't want to freak you out more than you already are. I'm okay, I'm just wondering if we might maybe see similar things. Cameron smiled at him, and that seems to throw the bear off for some reason. Huh, well... But he seemed to stop out of it. To be honest, I see people getting killed, usually. Not sure if it's if it's real or from the past, or if it ain't. Sometimes it just feels like something being made up. Cameron can understand that feeling. Yeah, I... Another wave of weakness and exhaustion. Sorry, I'm still really tired. Cameron slides down the wall to sit again, still feeling out of it. But at least he feels somewhat comfortable with this bear now. <sighs> my red alert alarm is going off in my head. I don't really like this. Makes sense after what you went through. You want my bed? I'm good, just need to catch my breath. She's not quite that comfortable with him. This is gonna sound weird too, but I see a ton of stuff in this town, and sometimes it feels made up. Like I saw a UFO, like an alien spaceship above a body today. Brian stares at Cameron. I say. Just as beginning to feel comfortable, like how he feels himself back on edge. Did he say something wrong? I, I mean, I don't know if it was UFO, but it looked... You're fine, kid. It's just that I haven't known anyone else that's seen something that I've seen, too. It was on that dirt road, right? Circular shape, bunch of red lights on it. Karen perks up. There's a little question of mine now that this bear is definitely like him. Yeah. Yeah, and like... Shit, when did that space shuttle explode? Like in the mid-80s, I think? This time, Brian lets out a little laugh of surprise and maybe a little disbelief as well. 86 to be exact. Damn, that's crazy. I met a few people like you, but on your whole nother level, kid. Ryan Cameron stares back, but they wonder if he's still dreaming all this. It's almost too trying to try and understand. 
how we ended up here with this bear, but if it's a dream, it's not the worst one. Oh, buddy. If you know what this did, if this, what this bear did, you would not be comfy at all. Can you help me find Devin? Maybe you could take me up with the road of the highway and could catch up to him. Bear leans back, scratching his head. I don't know about that, kid. He took off at a good pace, and I'll bet he's out. He's probably already reached the highway by now. Probably in the process of flirting in the hardest. Cameron twists the hem of his shirt in his paws, feeling a sickening, growing knot of worry in the pit of his stomach. He just wants to go to run and find Dev and escape the town with him, but the threat of what's out there is very real, and Cameron does not want to repeat what happened out there in the forest. And apparently, Dev already escaped without him. It makes sense why he left him behind, but that doesn't make it hurt. This doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Only now are the memories of what happened during this blackout returning, and only now does he remember how it felt like being in hell. Can that shadow creature get in here? Nah, it seems to blow the trailer. Don't know why. You okay? Karen grabs his eyes with both paws. I... I... don't know. His increasingly heavy breasts prompt Brian to crouch in front of him, patting his shoulder roughly. Hey, you're fine. I'll make you something, okay? How's some tea, Sam? That almost calmed me down. The patch jolt the coyote back to wakefulness, and he nods, if only to get the bear to focus on something than him. Okay. Great, I'll get started, Ollie, and just relax for now. Devin? Devin time? Devin, where's Devin? Okay, okay, so he was telling the truth. Brian was telling, I was like, he must have killed them or knocked them out or something. Cause I, <laughs> the wind whips violently in Devin's face. It's powerful enough that he can barely breathe. The ominous sound of the sirens were really the only thing they guaranteed to be home as soon as he possibly could be. He always took their warning seriously because what they warned, what they warned have always terrified him. So now in this haze of pain and horror, he wonders why he didn't heed the warnings. The mile-wide tornadoes that rip across the plains of his home state evoke a primal fear in him that few other things do. He'd felt that fear moments before his world became a red flash of pain. Okay, so he did lie. For he saw Arthur Artie crumple lifeless to the ground at the same time a pot. Shit. Before he was made to drink from the plastic bottle water their bear brought off his trailer. And before his paws were tightly bound above his head. As Devin briefly comes to in the red glow of this metal container he's in, to the sound of metal change and the feeling of cramped heat, he knows he should be doing something. He should be helping someone, someone he deeply cares about. Peta, Artie, Cameron. 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 His voice is rough, dry, on the verge of breaking. His chest feels as like if it's being crushed. Devin slinks back into the darkness even when his mind roils in terror, even as the F5 tornado continues to bail right towards him. The fuck? The fuck does that mean? What is happening? Cameron sits at the table as the bear busies himself near the stovetop with his back to the coyote. Again, the coyote contemplates leaving it by asking Brian again or just walking out the door. Another glance toward the window confirms raincoat monster is still out there, this time standing high in the trees, perched in a branch, still watching. Cameron quickly looks away again. He feels deep down that if he leaves, another terrible thing is going to happen. Well, he believes the bear's story about what happened. Something about this trailer is extremely uncomfortable, making him even more anxious. He thinks that must have something to do with his upbringing, the long, narrow space feeling familiar in the worst of ways. It's like suddenly falling ill, and be reminded of all the awful feelings one has had when they're especially sick. 
Meanwhile, Brian is chattering about, about how Camille is particularly affected when it comes to anxiety. And Cameron wonders why he's moving around so much if he's just making tea. Mostly, though, Cameron is trying to think clearly, get his thoughts to line up correctly with the fog he still feels clouding his brain. It's making him extremely tired, and a couple of times the coyote is convinced that he's still dreaming. It's almost like he's high again without any of the positives of being high. His anxiety is already calming down, though, despite the worry that whatever was in the forest might have done some kind of damage to his brain. He focuses his thoughts on, De focuses his thoughts on Devin, trying to think clearly. Would the bear really leave him alone like this? He could have at least left a message to let him know that this is what he wanted, that Cameron is safe in this situation, but Cameron also knows that it wouldn't have been very, all that practical. If Devin was really in a hurry, which he definitely would have been, he would have left him behind if he knew it was for the best. And if he knew the situation was safe, there isn't really a way he, he could have left a message anyway except for a text, but no phone and no service. This bright guy really wants to help them, though he should have gone to the highway instead. He has, to, he has to have a car, right? It's not like he can just arrive out here on an old trailer. Cameron fixes his face into a pleasant smile, knowing that it seemed to set the old bear at ease whenever he did. Do you have a car? Brian Simmons orders doing glances back. Oh, well, I kind of share a truck with, with, with another guy in town. He happens to be out of town with that truck right now, of course. He would be right. Of course he would be right. Uh oh, okay. Brian smiles at him again. I can see why Dan well, Daniel likes you. You're a friendly kid. Oh, you mean Devin? Shit, yeah, that br the brain doesn't remember things like it used to. You're fine. Cameron stirs the table feeling like the exchange was very strange, but... It's hard to think through the cloudiness. Despite the dulled anxiety, the feeling is worrying him more and more. I'm, uh... I'm actually feeling really weird. I'm so tired. Well, concerning what happened to you, that makes sense. Not to prob do you do you do you do any drugs? No, not anymore at least. I, I mean I had some weed like hours ago, but that should have worn off by now. Brian shrugs. People always say weed ain't a big deal was probably what fucked me up the most but when I first tried it. Cameron listens to the sound of liquid being poured into a cup. Yeah, I don't I don't think I like it. But I should still shouldn't still be high, right? You shouldn't, but, from, but after my first time smoking, I felt high, I fell off a fucking years after, even though I wasn't touching the stuff. Jeez. Fucking Christ, yeah, this is... Cameron feels a prickle of war underneath the haze. Years? Yep, it's, uh, what's it called? Depersonalization? I mean, I felt more part of my own, and everything looked all weird and distorted, like a filter was in front of my eyes. Cameron recalls some of his own friends describing the exact same thing, even when their trip was supposed to be over. He'd experienced himself under the influence of various dissociatives. Having the same experience while he's supposed to be sober is borderline terrifying, though. We does that? His worry and panic break through the surface for a moment he feels like for that moment he's surfaced from the muddy depths of his confusion before slipping back under. He can't live in a dream for the rest of his life. What even is his life, sitting in, in a trail with an old, slightly smelly bear? How'd he even get here again? Where's Dev? Oh, shit. Kemlin suddenly grips the table while he's shaking, as if he feels... as he feels as if his body is lifting out his body somehow, and that he has to hold on to some, something early in place. Hey, you're alright, kid. Here, uh... Ryan ends up the fridge, opens the freezer, pulls out an ice tray, and drops a few cubes into the mug, the ice clinking loudly. He stirs for a moment and turns back to the trembling coyote. Hope you don't mind the ice, but it's sure cool enough to drink now. He's still confused and terrified and just wanting something to do. To focus on, Garen reaches out for the mug the bear is holding out to him. He takes some trembling paw, gulping it down. It's filled with honey and the strong taste of ginger, and it's unlike any chamomile tea's had before. The amount of honey is surprising. He briefly wonders if it's a bear thing, even though Devin never seemed to have much of an affinity for it. Still, Cameron doesn't get the full flavor. 
the concoction until he's finished it and as he exhales an odd nutty taste makes me chemically and describe his dirt lingers in the back of his tongue and he frowns at the bizarre terrible tea he can't help pulling a face he looks in the mug a thick round glob of honey remaining at the base while dark particles slowly correct around it it's distracting enough that his panic attack is turning up before he can even really begin Ryan laughs Sorry like that, I like to add in Kavaru to soothe anxiety too. I should have warned you. Cameron had thought the taste was somehow familiar, but he supposes that any kind of root would have an earthy, bitter taste. Oh, it's okay, just wasn't expecting it. I read about Kav a few times when I'm looking up ways for to help with anxiety. Never tried it though. Well, get ready for to change your life. It got me off all my, all my chill pill meds. I do have some leftover bars if you need something stronger, though. Xanax, uh, I'll wait and see. Well, that would be nice. Cameron already feels like he's falling asleep, so it doesn't seem like the best idea. Well, he mostly believes a spare story. He doesn't want to be completely unaware of what's happening right now. I'm guessing you've had some experience with it before, huh? Uh... Cameron frowns at the table, not sure what to say. Doesn't really want to discuss his past with a stranger, even if it, even if the guy seems like he would understand. Ryan puts his paws up like he's showing he's unarmed. Yeah, I don't judge. I don't judge, kid. I was just I was into that lifestyle for most of my life before I started turning things around. But Cameron's still cautious. He doesn't want to make it seem like he's suspicious. It doesn't feel like the best idea to sour things with him being the only other person with him in the middle of a desert. Yeah, I did a bit of everything in middle school and high school. Only thing I got hooked on was opioids, though. Oof, you went half the country, kid. That's a rough one. Tired of starting to, starting to plateau, if not recede slightly. And Karen feels an odd but welcome sense of empathy toward this bear. Must be the kava kicking in. Ryan's face, uh, here's a bit more defined and clear, and there's a warmness in his eyes. It was my first drug too, I experimented with everything else because I was trying to find something less addictive and harmful. Ryan shakes his head. That's the problem with it. There ain't much out there that makes you feel that good, that's what I'm told anyway. Ryan chuckles. I just took one of my dad's hydros and ended up kicking my guts out for hours. Guess I'm lucky I can't keep him down. Cameron thinks about that. About how nice it would have been if he had become violently ill whenever he tried opiates or any drug for that matter. Christ. Yeah, I'd say that's some good luck. Quick caution. Quick caution, I haven't done it since, though. Good for you. Ryan gazes down his nose at Cameron, starting to frown. Cameron's ears twitch as he senses a sudden change in mood. Now, I don't mean to bring this up again, but, uh... Did your visions get more intense when you did heroin? First, Cameron wants to correct the bears. He's never done heroin, but then he stops as he thinks back. Of course, his visions got worse whenever he was on certain drugs, including opiates, but he just assumed back then that they were just agitating his already present delusions. It's the only day he made the connection between drug uses and hallucinations or visions. Yeah, actually, and a few times on other stuff too. Does that happen to you? Definitely! Again, I'm feeling empathy growing in the coyote's chest. There are others like him, just like him. Maybe I'm not going crazy, then I keep going back and forth on that. Ryan chuckles a bit. Well, not normal crazy anyway, anyway, right? Say. Ryan looks carefully at Cameron again. The coyote's almost distracted by the glow that seems to be emanating from the bear's eyes. Oddly enough, the intensely vivid and defined fur seems to be rippling as if blowing in the wind, even though they're inside. Is this kava? You ever tried something more trippy like acid or shrooms? Cameron shifts and contemplates like the last word. Yeah, both. Acid was fine, but nothing weird happened. Shrooms just kind of fucked me up and I saw all kinds of things. Mm, that's too bad. That one can be a real eye-opener. Oh. Cameron's not what else to say, feeling just a bit uncomfortable again. But yeah, most drugs make you see some things. Only ones that don't are stems. That's why so many people get gotten to meth. Ryan chuckles again, but this time it sounds a bit dark, sinister even. The only problem with that is that myth still makes you see shit, but only because it makes you go crazy. Arches and half circles. Yeah. 
kind of looks back down at the table. He wonders about his mother again and if maybe she was like him. Maybe she took the stimulants because she was just trying to stop the visions, but ended up starting away with hallucinations and delusions instead. Kevin watches the wood grain on the table shift and move slightly like waves in an ocean. Oh, shit. And then it hits him. It hits him hard. The aftertaste of the tea, why it was familiar, why things are moving in inexplicable ways, why everything is feeling more fucked up by the second. He's been here before. Moment seems to blink out of existence from Cameron's memory because the next thing he knows, he's already standing up, the chair clearing the ground behind him. He stares at Brian with wide eyes, mouth open, but he can't seem to say anything. He can't think of what to say if the bear did what he thinks he did. Brian stands back, watching Cameron carefully in a way that tells him that Cody tells the Cody that the bear isn't surprised at all by this reaction that makes Cameron even more afraid. Cozy, dreaming, dreamy light into the trail that becomes more ominous, the red, red and dangerous, and the bear in front of him seems to warp. Don't fuck it. Okay. Into a demon. No. No, no, no. What did you give me? Come on, looks wildly at the coffee mug. You need to calm down, understand. What did you give me? I think you already know the answer to that, so why don't you sit down and get it together? Bear's face is so warped that Cameron honestly can't tell if it's real or not. Was it psilocybin to give me a drug with, drink with shrooms? Brian says nothing, and he's right that Cameron knows. He can never forget this feeling. Oh my god, why? It ruined my life! And as he went for breath, the sounds of his gasping was drowning the bear out. Sit down and I'll explain. Ken has no intention of sitting down. The sensations and visuals are just as bad as last time, if not worse, and he's only at the beginning. The fear and panic reach a dizzy, dizzy level, and Cameron is running around the table for the door. And he's on his back, his chest, spine, and head aching. Oh my god. <sighs> Fucking hell. The art's amazing, but Christ almighty, I hate this. Brian is on top of him and Brian is on his back. You can see the coffee mug shatter on the ground a few feet away. Cameron struggles, wheezing for breath. Let me go, I can't breathe! Ryan responds by squeezing arms to get lean more weight in Cameron's torso. Ugh, stop, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Doesn't even know what he's apologizing for, just hope maybe he'll get the bear to stop. And I thought you were cute when you were smiling. That's the whatever reason the scariest part of what's happening right now. He starts to scream the only person he can think of. Devin, help me, Devin! De I can't fucking do that right now, my fuck. I, I got, I wish I was home alone. Because then I could actually get into this fully, but no. I can't because I want to fucking disturb people in the house. Because Jesus Christ. Just people everywhere and whatever. Shut the fuck up. Ryan sounds legitimately disgusted. He pulls himself off of Cameron. Cody first to stream and sees Brian foot lash out and kick him in the side and send him against the base of the counter. Then leaning over him with both of his giant paws on the edge of the counter, he starts kicking Cameron over and over. Cameron yelps and wheezes the blows hard enough to think he's worried the bear is definitely going to break something he hasn't already. He thrashes and rolls, trying to escape. Then one kick, one kick catches him particularly hard at the base of his sternum and, violently, and he violently curls up, a loud frog-like croaking noise escaping his throat. Brian pauses the sounds continue emanating from Cameron's mouth. Cameron can hear the bear breathing heavily over him as if Brian watches his agonized writhing, almost like he's fascinated by it. After nearly a minute, the terrible noises turn back to gas, which then turn into sobs as Cameron stays curled up on his side, one arm around his midsection, while the others pressed over his eyes. 
Brian doesn't move, just watching his camera cries on the floor. The first time I think something better just keep his eyes closed and try to disappear in the darkness. Maybe wake up, but in a new place this time. Anywhere seems better than here. That's when the odd, slightly curved, glowing gold lines begin expanding and shrinking behind his eyelids, and Karen whines the terror reminder of what's going to happen. You're going to trip, it's going to be terrible. Karen pulls his paws away from his eyes and finds that what he sees isn't much better. The huge bear is crouched in front of him, his fur now a writhing, pulsating mass of a thing that almost seems like another living creature covering the bear. Now listen and listen good, because what you do next might decide whether you go or not. This is a dream. It has to be a dream. Everything that's happened, not just in this trailer, but in this whole town. It has to be a dream, a hallucination, a trick. This can't be happening. I need you to talk to some folks that I used to know. If you're really one of those psychics, you can fix my problems, I just might let you out of this town. The fuck? Oh, shit. Cameron. When it comes to again, he birds out the name without thinking. He's not Trey Long. It's been since the last time he woke up. Feels like hours, possibly days, since he was last conscious. He'd been dreaming. Some about insects crawling and biting his arms. And tornadoes twisting force. He realizes that his arms are what brought him back to the waking world. They've fallen asleep and now the tingling sensation is so bad that it feels like they're covered in crawling, writhing ants made of molten lead. The bear grunts in discomfort and tries to bring them down above, above, above his head but isn't able to. They come up short and hears a rattling sound close to his ears which twitch at the loudness. Chains. Devin freezes keeping his eyes closed unsure of whoever did this. To him is close by. Although it's hard to think through all the haziness, the memories come back to him rather quickly. First him was walking deep near the woods, before the strange bear went into his trailer to get some. Came up with a bottle of water and claimed it was for Cameron. Then after walking further into the forest, dense forest, they came upon a white van. The exact kind of van that would make most people suspicious. Devin did become more suspicious, but by that time it was already too late. The old bear had pulled a gun on them, and one that wasn't as shocking, and told them, to get bo told them both to get in the van. Arya started to run, and the bear decided to shoot him, aim for his head. Devin isn't sure, but he could swear he saw a spray of something, whether it be fur, blood, or worse, fan out from the back of Arya's head before he dropped. Devin's fingers and toes clenched inward as he thinks about that moment. The sound. The suddenness of it. Most he remembers the way Artie fell. He was instant, like the strings that had held him up that had been cut, crumpling so quickly that Brian is sure had been killed. At that point, De Devin did everything the old bear had told him to do, include laying Cameron on the rough desert floor. Devin tries to keep from whining, as he wonders if that might be the last time he saw Cameron, and then lay down in the van and... <sighs> letting him bind his arms up. He thought about flying back in the moment, but it was so quick. But before I knew it, he was secured, and he was made to drink from the bottle. Now he's in the very center of the tornado. A twisting force. Devin clutches his eyes shut even tighter, feeling moisture gather at the corners. Around the point is equal to force times distance. But he opens them a moment later, realizing that his captor would have seen all the moons he'd made. perpendicular to force. He's alone in the van. His eyes sting and the bear realizes he's sweating heavily. This metallic box he's stuck in is hot, almost overwhelmingly stifling. He's worried for a moment that he slept through the night, and now it's sunrise going to cook to death in his van. But after gauging the light, it's still around sunset, just a few hours of what happened. After Artie had been killed. Sh shit and squeezes his eyes shut again, feeling tears leak out into the moist fur in his cheeks. He allows himself this moment, but quickly focuses again, knowing Cameron is still out there with that bear. 
That's enough to get a rise from Devon, one that builds into a wave in his chest. A combination of adrenaline and terror, but mostly fury. While the brutality of the backwoods bear evokes fear in Devon, it also makes him angry that someone, anyone, would feel they have the right to do what the old bear did. He opens his eyes again and takes in his surroundings. He's lying flat on his back, arms stretched above his head. You can feel what feels like a pair of handcuffs that are holding him in place. There's enough give that slowly he's able to turn over onto his stomach. The action is incredibly painful, but Devin can't help but grunt loudly. His arms feel like they might fall off as they spasm. Slowly, painfully, he pulls himself into a kneeling position, getting a better look at his predicament. He realizes then that these handcuffs are like shackles, meant to hold bear-sized creatures like himself in place. Their bolts sit into the floor of the van. Devin glances up suddenly, his ears catching what looks like a faint cry outside the van. Cameron? Devin's voice comes out hoarse and cracked once more. Is that Cameron? It sounded like him. Devin is still grabbing over in the bottle of water, but he's sure he heard the distinct sound of his boyfriend's voice. The fact that it's now so suddenly absent convinces Devin that it was definitely Cameron. He strains to listen for several more seconds, but can't hear anything. He looks down at the heavy chain, licking the metal cuffs around his wrists. Unbreakable. Still, he finds himself foolishly yanking on the shackles, hoping that there'd be some kind of given the slightly rusted chain and bolts. Shit! Tears fill Devin's eyes, the feeling of falling, falling forever, returning. He'd felt this way only a few times before. The first time, he only was running home, after he found Lupita's body. The last time, when he saw Alturo get shot. And now, knowing that his boyfriend could be at the mercy of this bear, whose intentions Devin can't even begin to guess. He just knows that they're very, very bad. But seeing the faces of those people, it changes something in Devin. A cool, icy calm descends on him, and he looks at the change carefully. His classes in physics had taught him all about the ways in which force is exerted, can seemingly accomplish things that seem impossible. So even while his heart hammers in his ears, and even while his brain is clouded with, with a dense fog of sedation, Devin analyzes the chain and the bolt holding the bolts holding it in place. Torque. Fuck you. Fuck you. We waited four fucking months for that, and you... <laughs> Fuck. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Um, that was an update. That was an update and a half. I really fucking liked that. That was well written. There were a few mistakes in like the capitalization of words and spelling of words, but like I only saw one or two. The polish of this game is amazing. And good God, I, I fucking love the writing style so much. It's just, it's, it's third person omniscient narrator. It's very much like To the Lighthouse and I love it. It's, it's so good. Howley has improved exponentially in terms of his writing and god i'm i can't wait for the next update whenever that happens probably another probably in five months with this but with the weight these things are releasing good grief anyway see you next time i guess whatever